hi it's Jodie and it's been a while <laughs> I'm currently in Cornwall. Very, very sunny so I'm sorry if I'm squinting a lot. <laughs> yeah. I am currently in Cornwall. I thought I'd film a little daily vlog, maybe weekly vlog. I don't know what this is going to turn into. I'm literally staying in the most beautiful place ever. Like this is the view from my bedroom right now. Ignore the parasol but yeah. Literally the most amazing view of the beach. Um, I have actually filmed a Cornwall Beach House tour video thing. I'm going to talk about some of the books behind me. Now this isn't all the books that I brought to Cornwall. I've actually brought another two. One's downstairs, one's in the wardrobe. I always bring a huge selection of books with me no matter where I go because I never know what I'm going to be in, in the mood to read. And yeah, I just, I wanted to bring loads of books, so I did. I'll show you the book I'm currently reading at the moment. So I don't know about anyone else, but in the summer, I really love reading romances and thrillers. I'm not actually reading any thrillers at the moment, and I don't really plan to, but that is usually what I kind of gravitate towards in the summer. I don't know why. It's just something about the season that just makes me want to read those kind of books. So I'm currently reading a sort of... A I think this would fall into the romance degree or just fiction. This is The Bookshop on the Shore by Jenny Colgan. I believe she's actually quite a popular author, but I've never read any of her books. This follows the main character, Zoe, and she has a son and she lives in London. She's a single mother because her son's father kind of just they just kind of separated and she's been bringing him up on her own really struggling he doesn't really help her he's never there but she's trying to get by on on a really low income job and she can't really support her and her son very well and she's just really struggling and her son is now four years old and he actually has selective mutism so he's never spoken before he understands obviously things but he just doesn't verbally communicate and the therapists that he's seen are saying you know he'll he will when he's ready and all this stuff so she's got all the stress kind of and like just anxiety built up about it and just about not being able to really afford a decent life for her and a child she is really really struggling she finally says to the father that you know look i really need your help and he's like mm, i can't really do anything see ya so then he, his family is naturally aware that he has a child. So he confides in his sister and his sister's like, oh, well, I actually know this woman who lives in Scotland who runs a bookshop and she is going to be going um, on maternity leave and she really needs someone to take over and all this. So she goes and meets up with um, Zoe and she says, look, I know this person who's in Scotland looking for someone to run the bookshop and blah, blah, blah and all this. And Zoe ends up deciding my language but she's just like fuck it let's just go for it we'll move to scotland and we'll try and start over there lady nina who has the bookshop also knew of this family who lived in this house called the beaches where there's three children the husband and there was a wife now the wife walked out but there's loads of different suspicions and village gossip about her being murdered and all different kinds of things and no one really knows where the wife and the mother disappeared to she just vanished and this is a tiny village in Scotland near Loch Ness and Zoe arrives there and Nina has basically set up so that she'll work in the bookshop and take over her from return to leave and help her out but she will also now be their nanny um, in the Beecher's house which is this massive massive mansion kind of gothic you know in the misty hills of Scotland kind of thing. She goes and she moves into this big gothic mansion with her son. She now has to try and look after these three children, keep the house good and also work in the bookshop as well as try and get her son into the nursery and hopefully get him talking. These three children are not very nice, they've all been excluded for fighting and stuff like this. They're various ages and you know they're just 
they miss their mother they're really scarred and traumatized by not having their mother and their father is an antique um bookseller so he travels around to try and find books and stuff um, and sell them for a living and he's always shut away in his library he's obviously dealing with the trauma and stress of his wife walking out and you know trying to bring his kids up on his own the father is very standoffish very strange he's a bit cold towards her doesn't really speak to her so i'll stop there that is what i've read so far that's a very very wide synopsis i'm halfway through the book now i'm on page 241 and it's like 400 pages i'm absolutely loving this it's just so good some of the books here i've got is another kind of romancey one and um, i actually came across this on twitter and i just thought i like the sound of it so i bought it when we had it in work and this is millie johnson's my one true north it's cursed it's illustrated by frank miller and written by thomas wheeler so this is a new series on netflix it's a fantasy from what i believe and we have a strong badass female protagonist which is what i love next up we have a book that has been on my tv every single month and i've been dying to read but just have not read don't know why but that is ninth house by lee bardugo and lastly we have queen of nothing by holly black so this is the third and final book in the folk of the air trilogy i absolutely loved um wicked king and cruel prince i hated the ending of w wicked king because i didn't expect it and you know card and honey you okay because what just if you've read it you know it just made me like really annoyed so all of the books that i brought with me i am still sitting on the floor i need to get up um but yeah i'm here until saturday and i just never want to leave it's literally the most beautiful place um if my other video is up with the tour i'll link it down below i should probably go and enjoy the sunshine um so i will update you guys in a bit um hopefully i'll make some progress on my book and yeah I'll see you guys soon. So I do have a reading update. So I finally finished reading The Bookshop on the Shore by Jenny Colgan. I forgot the name. And I absolutely loved it. Um, do excuse my hair, it's really frizzy because we've been out today and it's been raining. Um, but yeah, I finally finished this and I absolutely loved it. I gave it four stars in the end um, just because, and I've seen this come up in a lot of the reviews I read for this book. Um, some of the editing wasn't great of this book and um, there was bits in this book where there'd be like a conversation or something happening and then the next sentence would be something totally different so it felt like there was bits missing besides that the actual story i just i don't even know why i loved it so much i just did i really really enjoyed this hi it's jody and sort of back on booktube <laughs> today is monday the third of august i think I think it's the 3rd of August and I have the week off work so hopefully I can vlog this week and actually make a decent comeback to booktube again because I have missed it and I have missed making videos it's just because I've been not doing it for a while I've built up this like anxiety over filming again but yeah anyway <laughs> so a few things um I do have blonde hair again and I have picked up a bit of a tan and for the first time in my life i bought a darker foundation and it's still too light compared to the rest of my body so that's why my face is so light <laughs> okay so i will quickly talk about two books that i have read recently if i've decided to put the footage in then you will have already heard me talk about what this book's about when i was in cornwall and i really love this it was a bit different for me and it's more of a rom com -y. not really a rom-com but kind of like a fiction romance kind of book it is the bookshop on the shore by jenny colgan so i really really enjoyed this book i think i gave it four stars maybe even five i can't remember it's just a really really nice story i love this i flew through it in a few days and yeah it was just it was a lot better than i thought it was going to be love that it was set in scotland and it was you know about someone running a bookshop and there was very much in there so yeah i think i gave this four stars maybe four and a half but i really did enjoy this and it prompted me to buy a lot of freelance books a lot which i will be doing a haul on soon so yeah there's that one <laughs> and then i finally finished the audiobook for the third book in the shadow hunters mortal instrument series city of glass by cassandra clare i enjoyed this a lot more than the first two i think i gave this four stars this was just so much better i love the world and i actually love the movie and the series of the first book but i just don't like the first book that much i don't know what it is i just don't i'm not a huge fan of clary and jace as i've said previously um, but clary definitely grew on me in this book i found her so much less annoying than the first two jace on the other hand even more annoying that boy like people are dying and you know the world's messed up in this book and it's just 
Jace feeling sorry for himself and whining and it's so annoying. He probably annoys me just as equally as Mal does in um, the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I just, oh, he really gets on my nerves. He really does. Um, but besides that, I really, really love this. The story really went somewhere different and I really enjoyed it. The one thing I will say is that one of the little plot twists in this book I spotted from the get-go. As soon as this certain character was introduced, I just knew exactly who it was going to be and where the story was going to go um, but I still enjoyed it anyway and I'm looking forward to the next one. I listened to this on audio um, which is what I'm doing with all these books. I think I gave this four stars and I did really enjoy it in the end so yay. <laughs> um, I really need to tidy my bookshelves and reorganise them because I have so many books that have arrived that I need to put on the shelves and no space and lights I need to take off. So I may do that in this vlog as well. Almost 3 p.m. I don't know if I'm gonna do any reading just yet. I think I might go out on a little bike ride and then I need to go to the post office and then come back and eat. So, exciting day. <laughs> do you have some book mail, which you can probably see behind me? I think most of it is just romance books that I did um, because I got my first YouTube paycheck, which is really exciting. It's something I never thought would happen. I didn't even realise that I could withdraw the money. I set my AdSense up a while ago and then forgot about it and yeah, I just got a notification from Google to say, you know, you've got this money sitting here, like, are you gonna take it out kind of thing? Um, so that was really nice and I decided as a treat I would just order loads of books with it, which is what I did and I ordered loads of romance books because romance isn't really a genre that I've read but I absolutely adore romance in my books. I struggle with books that don't have romance in um, so why I've never really delved into romance I don't know but the kind of romance books that I do really like are the ones that are kind of like sort of fiction romance not necessarily like straight up romance. I don't read smutty romance um, it's more like you know the Jenny Colgan book I just showed and things like that so yeah i ordered a bunch of books so so many on waterstones so yeah i have a huge box there and then the other one and my fairy loot box has arrived so i'm going to film that separately i do an unboxing I do have another two books i can talk about so i picked this up about two weeks ago and um, this is a non-fiction book i'm trying to get into non-fiction more more just like nature books because i am very interested in nature and the outdoors and i just thought well i should probably read some more books to do with it and just read some more non-fiction this is called into the tangled bank and it says in which our author ventures outdoors to consider the british in nature and uh, so i think that kind of explains exactly what it's about so so pretty i was sent this from a publisher which is called the nesting and this is just a proof copy which is really really cool looking and it says the grieving widower the motherless daughters a beautiful house in the woods sounds like a fairy tale that would be a lie and this is out in october and this sounds very spooky and very creepy and i can't wait to read it i don't know when i'll get to this i'm probably gonna wait till more september time when autumn's like creeping in because in the summer i more gravitate towards like romancy kind of books but i'm gonna get to this soon yeah hopefully this is gonna be a decent reading vlog i don't really have any plans for my week off so i'm probably just gonna be reading and just doing random stuff so i will hopefully take you guys along with me and make this a little bit <laughs> so i just finished unboxing the fairy loot july box i need to edit that soon um and get it up it's up because i've had the box for a couple of days i was just waiting to unbox it and film it um i don't know what to do with myself now i'm quite hungry i might go and get some lunch or film another video i really really need to film a haul um for all the box that i bought but i just can't be bothered because there's so many like I don't know if it's worth even doing a haul because there are that many books. There's definitely over 20, which is really bad. <laughs> I have a lot of filming to do. And this is like the first time I've put makeup on. I put makeup on to film that Cornwall video, but besides that, I just haven't worn makeup for months. I've stopped wearing it except for filming or special occasions and stuff or if I'm going out for dinner, um, which obviously hasn't really been happening because of lockdown. I've got a face full of makeup. I thought, hmm, maybe I should actually film a few videos. So I might do that. <laughs> Hello. So no reading update. I finally filmed some videos, so I need to edit them, which is probably what my life's going to be for next week and i might go for either a walk or a run now 
because today is officially my first day of trying to improve my life and get my shit together. I want to get into running again. I loved running when I was younger and I stopped doing it. So I'd like to get into that again, even though it kills me trying to do it now. I'll update you guys tomorrow and see if I have any more exciting reading updates or just general stuff to talk about because as of right now, I don't. Um, but yeah, I will catch you guys tomorrow. Today is Thursday the 6th of August, I think. In the middle of getting ready, but... I started reading Midnight Sun today. Um, I wasn't planning to even read this this month, to be honest, or anytime soon, but it arrived today and I don't know, I just felt like reading it. So I had a nice little bubble bath and I read some. I'm not that far in, I'm only on page. So I'm only on page 63, which is barely anything because this is a big book. Not, <laughs> not far at all. But I started it and I'm actually really, really enjoying it. I've got a confession to make. I've never actually read all of the Twilight books. I have them all. I read like half of the first Twilight book when I was like 13. <laughs> so we're talking 10 years ago now. And yeah, I've actually never read them. So I probably shouldn't be reading Midnight Sun first. I should definitely be reading the Twilight books first. But I don't know. I just felt like reading it. I've already seen the films, obviously, so I already know what happens anyway, so it's not like anything's going to be spoiled for me, really. Um, yeah, I've started Midnight Sun, um, and I'm really enjoying it. I've started my audiobook for The of Fallen Angels um, in the Mortal Instruments series. I've started the audio for that. Um, I'm literally not even a chapter in, so I don't really have much to say about that. But yeah, that's pretty much all the updates I have. I'm getting ready because I'm going to have dinner, and then later I'm going to a beach yoga session which will be really nice i'm really really excited i used to do yoga very amateurly like i don't even know a long time ago probably when i was like 16 17 i used to go to yoga classes and then i just stopped going so it's totally new to me again i currently have a little bit of a knee injury um i decided to take up running and after my very first run, I have injured my knee, so that's great for me, I love that. That's what I get for trying to exercise. Hoping that yoga doesn't make it worse, but actually makes it better, because I think it does need to be stretched out a little bit, so hopefully that helps, and I'm just looking forward to it. It'll be really nice, and yeah. <laughs> All the reading updates that I have, I need to tidy my bedroom, because it is an absolute tip, and then I think I will sort my hair out get properly dressed out of my dressing gown and read some more of Midnight Sun. So hi, so today is Friday the 7th of August. I haven't updated you guys um, for a little bit so I think the last time I spoke to you I said I was going to yoga so I went to beach yoga last night which was really fun but I was so tired when I got home I literally read like five pages of Midnight Sun and then I fell asleep so don't really have any reading updates I'm just about to actually go out for lunch all I want to do is sit and read Midnight Sun but I'm going out for lunch so I'll take you guys with me and then I shall update you if I do any reading because the place we're going is actually like an hour away um so I might read in the car if I'm not driving so yeah <laughs> see you guys in a bit Still don't have a reading update for you guys i'm only on page 70 now of midnight sun so yeah hardly made any process process <laughs> progress i haven't done any reading um i went out today for lunch as you will have seen and that's pretty much it i have spent in the past two hours probably more on tiktok you watch one video and then before you know it it's two hours and you don't know what you're doing with your life so yeah so yeah, I fell down a TikTok rabbit hole, ended up on it for a couple of hours and have wasted my entire evening, which is just fantastic. I am going to go and pick my boyfriend up soon and then I want to come home and I want to get into some comfy PJs and hopefully sit down and read. I don't know. This vlog absolutely sucks. 
I just, yeah, I'm finding it very difficult to vlog for some reason. Hi, so today is the 8th of August. Haven't updated you guys again because I absolutely suck. But I literally have done no more reading. I've been out and about hobbling on my bad leg today. <laughs> um, me and my boyfriend went into town. We got our first little coffee, um, a cafe Nero since the lockdown, which was really nice. And then we just went and picked up a few bits and bobs from some shops that we needed to and yeah i went into waterstones so i have a waterstones haul for you guys it's a really exciting book two of these i bought and then the rest i actually got with some loyalty card points because i had like 40 pounds on there so i was like i may as well just spend it now and get them because they've been on the shelf in work forever and i just haven't picked them up and i thought right i'll just get them today so i did that but i bought two other books as well so the first one is just one of the reading agency books so these books you can get at certain watchstones branches i'm not sure where else you can get them they're just quick reads books and they're just very very short stories literally a pound so this one is 98 pages long and it is by millie johnson and it's called the little dreams of lara cliff um so i am currently sort of reading a millie johnson book at the moment i've kind of it's kind of taking a back seat because I'm reading Midnight Sun. But yeah, I really like her writing style so far on that one. And I just thought this is, I'd pick this up because it's cheap and it just sounds really cute. And I finally picked up The Poet X. is by Elizabeth Acevedo or Acevedo. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly. This is a book I wanted to read for the longest time. I was planning on buying this in hardcover, which is why I haven't picked it up yet. But every time I've gone to order it, it was just never available. And I just thought I'd pick up today because I do really want to get to it. Um, so this is actually written in verse, which is like really really interesting i've never read a book that's written in verse before so this is kind of about first love and kind of um making sure her voice is heard in a world that doesn't really allow that for her um so yeah i'm really really excited to read this i've heard amazing things about it and it tackles quite a lot of important topics and yeah i'm just really looking forward to finally getting to this i'm still planning to buy the hardcover as soon as i can um hopefully i can get hold of it i just thought i'd get the paper back now because i do really really want to read it yeah i picked that up may as well mention this now as part of the haul i got this book here from my boyfriend my boyfriend got me it from amazon the other day as a little present and this is called tweet cute and yeah it's exactly like it sounds this follows two people who are kind of at war with each other on twitter but also talking to each other on this chat room app designed by one of them but they don't know it's one another uh, and they start to fall for each other so it's kind of like an enemies to lovers kind of story but via social media which is kind of cool um because obviously we're in a very digital era right now this is just kind of like a unique-ish story in a way of being like through social media i like that kind of thing it reminds me of a cinderella story where um they're kind of chatting to each other online and they don't know who the one is i love that kind of stuff so i'm really really excited to read this i'm not going to bother reading the full synopsis i will just link this book down below if you do want to know exactly what it's about then we have some books that i've been on and off and over getting these are the ones from work that have been behind the till for about a month now maybe a bit longer and I just haven't picked them up yet because I already own two copies of each of these books already. So I don't really need them, but these are the brand new editions. And yeah, I just had to have them for my shelf. It's one of my favourite book series ever by one of my favourite authors. Um, so these are the new Akatar hardcovers. So the spines look like this. And then I'll show you each of the covers. So we've got A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is like this. A Court of Mist and Fury, which is my all-time favourite. A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is like this. And then we have A Court of Frost and Starlight. So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the covers. I really don't like the paperbacks. I think they're extremely tacky. And I think the artwork on these was in really poor taste. Doesn't really relate to the stories much. And I just don't, it's not really, they could have, it could have been better. Especially if they want them to appeal to adults more. I just think they could have done something better with them. But again, I'm Sarah J Mass trash, so we all knew I was going to end up buying these at some point. Um, so I got them with the loyalty card talents that I earned, um, so it wasn't too bad. Really glad to have them, I just don't know how I'm going to fit them on my shelf. Here's pretty much my little book haul. I haven't really done any reading today because we've been out and about, um, and we went to visit my nan as well. And then we're just cooking dinner, so I might read some more tonight because I'm going to get a nice long hot bubble bath and try and do a bit of reading then, but I've got so much editing to do and some other things to do, so... I don't know if I'm going to have time for any more reading tonight after that. But yeah, that's pretty much all the updates that I do have at the moment.
so I haven't updated you guys in a few days. This has probably literally been the worst vlog ever and it makes no sense. This was all filmed like over a week or so and then obviously the call must have the beginning. So yeah, it's kind of all over the place but I thought I'd put it together anyway. So I wanted to wrap it up today just because I have work tomorrow and then next week I am doing ridiculous overtime so I probably won't vlog at all. I've been working a lot this week which is why this vlog has been so rubbish. So today is Saturday the 15th of August. This morning I went for a really nice breakfast and then into town to run a few errands and yeah it's been a really really nice day i have a few things to share with you guys so i have a mini book haul again and then some reading updates but first i just want to show this amazing halloween decoration so i went into tk maxx today and they had a whole aisle of halloween stuff which is just if you know me you know how much i love halloween and how much i love autumn so it got me really really excited and I just want to show you what I got. So I got this huge pumpkin with this cool little snake on it. I'll show you. Really, really dark, so I've just put my ring light on <laughs> to try and make the light better. But yeah, this is the pumpkin with the little snake on it. I really, really love this. I'm absolutely obsessed with it, and it's the coolest thing ever. I love Halloween decor, so I can't wait to get some more goodies. I'm going to see if it'll just sit up there for now. So yeah. It really reminds me of the new Carrie Maniscalco book which is coming out with the book cover so that was kind of like the main reason that I bought it. Then another non-book thing but book related is this cute little cup and saucer. Um, so this is inspired by Alice in Wonderland and it just says drink me and has this little cute Alice thing and then some like Ace of Spades on the saucer and this was just from Asda and it was £5 so I could not buy it. And it's the cutest thing ever and I've just got this weird obsession with cups and saucers. I have like multiple on my bookshelves and yeah, I just really like them. Yeah, that is all the non-bookish stuff. And then for my little book haul, I have three books to show you guys. So this first one I am so, so excited about. And this follows on the theme to do with autumn. Um, so this is a book that has a poem every single day for every single day of autumn. And yeah, this is just, it speaks to my soul. It's literally like it was made for me. So this is literally a poem for every day of autumn and it's edited by Ali Asiri is how you say it, I think. So this is the same person who wrote um, a poem for every single day of the year. But I'm obsessed with this, look at this cover. It is literally the prettiest cover ever. I love it so much and yeah, I can't wait to read this every single day in autumn. This I don't actually think is out yet or might have just come out but we got copies into work early and we were allowed to buy them so I bought this one. Um, so you can get this on Waterstones and yeah, it's just, it's the prettiest autumnal book ever and it's got me very, very excited for autumn. So next up is a book I'm also super excited about and if you've watched some of my vlogs and some of my wrap up videos you will know that I read the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman I think is how you say her name and I adore those graphic novels they are so cute so light and fluffy and heartwarming and I absolutely love them. So of course I bought this book here which is the Nick and Charlie um, a solitaire novel novella sorry and this is a limited signed edition so we have the signature there which is really really cool and this is just a little like short story about Nick and Charlie it's not very long at all but of course I had to buy this and yeah I'm really excited to read this I've read a couple of pages already but I'm hoping to read this tonight or tomorrow because it's very very short but yeah I can't wait to read this and read more of Nick and Charlie I'm so excited for volume three which comes out next year so yeah I'm really happy with this one and then lastly is a really really random buy for me i think i saw ruby granger talk about this or show this in an instagram story and i've seen a lot of good reviews for this so this is like a coming of age story apparently it's really similar to i capture the castle by i think it's dodie smith but i haven't actually read that but i do own it I just really like the sound of this it's a little bit different it's more literature a lot of people were talking saying this is kind of going to end up being a classic this is the great got him by meg russoff i think is how you pronounce the last name this is about a family on like a summer holiday these two kids arrive who are the sons of an actress and i think they kind of just invoke chaos within the family and people fall in love with them and they're just yeah it does say in here suddenly there's a serpent in paradise and the consequences will be de devastating a magical and utterly faultless voice so yeah there's not a massive synopsis about what this is about but it has a lot of family um relationships romance summer holidays that kind of thing so i just think it'd be a really really nice summer read and it's very very short it is only 200 pages just over 200 pages and it has these really nice spring edges but yeah this is just something that sounded really really interesting and i'm excited to read it to see if my views align with the reviews that I've read. This is a nice summer one and I'm hoping to read this very soon and it will be a quick read. 
So finally we have a reading update. So my reading has kind of gone everywhere at the moment. I was starting the audiobook for the fourth Shadowhunter book and I got like two chapters into that. Haven't listened to it for a while but I have been reading Midnight Sun so I am 191 pages in which isn't very much at all which is like here. It's not very much at all but it is a really enjoyable experience so far. Edward is a bit of a weirdo. Um, he's kind of stalkerish and a bit creepy but he's a vampire so I guess it's not exactly normal but it's not exactly not normal because I guess human rules kind of don't apply to vampires but well, this is really really good so far obviously it's just I like from Edward's perspective but we've got a lot more of vampire stuff happening in this which I am loving and if you really like your vampires then I definitely recommend picking this up and it's really really interesting to see things from his perspective and this book kind of explains why certain things happen within Twilight um, which I also really like about it. So I have heard now that Stephanie Wright is planning on releasing two more books from Edward's perspective but I don't know if that's definitely true. I hope that it is. But yeah I'm almost 200 pages in and I am really really liking this. Slow progress because I've been working a lot but yeah really really enjoying it so far and then the last reading update is one that i actually started yesterday and i did this totally randomly i was just on my way to work and i wanted an audiobook to listen to and i just didn't feel like listening to one of these shadow hunter books and i've been trying to get through some of my greek mythology pile for a while i've just not necessarily been in the mood to listen to it but you will all know i absolutely loved song of achilles by madeline miller it was one of my favorite books and yeah, I've been wanting to read Cersei for a while, so I started the audio for Cersei yesterday and I am like nine chapters in, so I'm on page 119. I'm getting close to the halfway point and I am absolutely adoring this book. The audio is absolutely amazing. The narrator, I can't, I'm not sure who it is, but she reminds me of Claire from Outlander and I am wondering if it possibly actually is the same actress who plays her in the TV show, but I'm not sure. But yeah. The way this is narrated, I think, is what's making this an even more amazing experience for me. It's really, really written very, very beautifully and the descriptive language in this is just amazing and yeah, I I think I'm going to love this a lot more than Song of Achilles just because it really is beautiful and yeah, I just, I really, really do adore this. Randomly start listening to that and like I said, I am enjoying it. So that's pretty much all the reading updates that I have at the moment. I don't think I have any other ones. But I am kind of reading like, including the two for my haul, I'm kind of reading like four books at the moment. Um, I was reading My One True North by Millie Johnson and I did get about 80 pages in, but I haven't picked that up for well over a week now and I think I'm just gonna keep it to one side until I finish Midnight Sun and these other books. I'm more in the mood for a romance again, but yeah, that's pretty much all the reading updates. I am sorry this vlog was an absolute mess and it didn't contain that much reading but I've just been working a lot this last week and I just wanted to get another little vlog out for you guys. I might try and vlog next week but I just don't think it's likely because I'm literally working every single day and when I get home from work I just don't have the time. Um, but yeah, I really do hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like to. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!